What's happening, dude? How are you, man? Good to see you. Good to see you. Oh, man. Uh, you have done so much for us over the years that as soon as I found out what this is all about, I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Uh, how's your daughter? Uh, she's doing all right. I haven't talked to her this morning yet, but uh, I'm sure she is laughing and but just lots of laughing. She likes to laugh a lot. Dude, uh, a hospital is never a place to be. And as a parent, uh, it hits a lot. You know, when it's you, you just go, you just keep on, no matter how bad it is, you go in your head, you're like, well, I'll be fine and I'll get out of here. But when it's, when it's your child, uh, when you don't know what's going on, your case, you really, really are, are sort of in the dark about what's going on. Uh, explain a little more about, about what France is going through. Yeah, so about two years ago, um, our our sitter noticed Francis having seizures. Okay. So she was she was watching her daughter and uh, she says, you know, Francis has been falling down a little bit. And it, we didn't know what she was talking about because we had we hadn't seen it. And it just it happened so quickly, man. It was like like, oh my God, I think I I saw it. Like she she had a seizure. You yeah. know, she's having seizures. And it and it went to like um, she was like having hundreds a day out of nowhere like it, really? Zoe was documenting this and just started catching these like oh she's having seizures so we went in and we we get uh they have this new thing we're doing genetic testing so okay test tester um come back after months and months um oh she has something called DHDDS um and we, we had the same reaction that anybody listening to this would have which is what the hell is that? What is Those it? are yeah. the letters. I can't even pronounce um, it. Yeah, so she has that. Um, it took us six months to even find out what it was. So so we scheduled the appointment. We're like, okay, well, we want to learn more. Like, we want to learn everything we can. And it's always reading papers. We're reading these papers. Like, there's, okay, there's only six people in the world with this. It's Really? It's, it's, yeah, it's like what they call like nano rare. Um, and it's a neurodegenerative disease. And we, we came in after six months and I mean, we're just so terrified because we've read all these papers and they pretty much told us, uh, well, we don't really know much. So come back in five years and let us know like what she's... is happening, like where she's at. Yeah. And man, I, I'll tell you what, like just in the last year of knowing what it is like, and, and better understanding it. Just in that year, I've I've seen her tremors worsen. I mean, we've gotten her seizures under control, but even even that was just so brutal. Like, you got to go through all these different medications: Depakote, Keppra. Like, yeah. And and they, she was talking about death, and she was like talking about things I've never heard my kid t talk about, seeing things that weren't there. But uh, as we learned more, um, there are ways you can treat this. And it, it just takes funding and it takes research. Yeah. And it really, uh, it's kind of like what the, the main thing that I would <laughs> look at in our healthcare system is and our education system. Like it, everything takes research and, and it all takes community. It all takes the help of everybody around us to raise awareness for these like rare diseases. And honestly, like it's, it's a pretty daunting task. I mean, we had a song that was so massive and I look at yeah. the bill for it, for it and I go, so, you know, we're first, we're like, let's sell everything. Let's just sell everything we have. And yeah. we're still doing that. <laughs> we're still selling everything we have. And we're going, we don't have enough. Good to, God. Uh, Portugaldemand.com. If you go to Francis Changed My Life, uh, right in the middle of the website. I always love your website, by the way. The Excel spreadsheet. I always think it's so funny. Uh, uh, but there is a, uh, a GoFundMe page that I, I, I hope everybody uh, that can donate does. Uh, Francis changed my life. You'll, again, you'll see it right in the middle of the website. Um, have, you, have you had a chance over the, the last year or so to talk or, or in, interact with the other five plus people that have this in the world? Is, is it even possible to, to reach out? Well, they, so so a lot of people aren't named in, yeah, in these that's... studies. And even, dude, there's some of them where we read and we're just like, oh my God, there's another person in New York that's 11 years old. That's Francis. That's got to be Francis. Because yeah. you're like reading the papers, there's no names. 
So the, there's a few people in China and a, a few people in Italy. Okay. And we, we haven't been able to connect with them, but there's a, uh, we're a subset of DD, DHDDS. So there are 70 people who have uh, a different form of DHDDS and we have connected with them. And that's, again, what this stuff is all about. Like you yeah. connect and try and learn as much as you can from each other, help fund all of this research, drug repurposing, like yeah, we're, so we've we've connected with a couple, and there's some folks in England that have been doing some really good stuff. So we're all just chasing every lead we can. Yeah, is that what they're finding? I'm always fascinated with with medicine and specifically pharmaceuticals. When you find out that a, a pharmaceutical for one thing, especially with something this rare, can work and and help another thing, has that been the case at least with the seizures uh, easing up on those? Uh, the seizures, the seizures are under control right now with uh, okay. the McDull. Um, that, but it was a, it was just a brutal process. I mean, there was a point where it was just like, dude, I because they're like, take it. You have to take it for two weeks at least before you kind of start seeing it working, okay. and uh, like some of the side effects start to dying down. And man, like she, she's this happy kid, and she was coming into my room every mo every morning, just going, no. Like we are not friends. Like, I don't. I don't like you. You don't love me. And she was. She would come in and she would just wake up and say this stuff to me. I'd be like, "Whoa! Oh. I don't think we can keep doing Depico." And they'd be like, yeah. "Give it another week. Give it another week." You just be going, ah, "I have to trust my gut on this." Yeah. yeah. You know, like it's been it's been a month, dude. Like I don't know if I can sit here like. My daughter is not being herself. I mean, they, they, it's just such a brutal process. Yeah, and I feel I, for I, everybody who, who goes through yeah. that. I, I can't begin to imagine. We have a 10-year-old and, and man, like I said, every, every medical visit, you're always, you always worry as a parent. Like, I don't, there's no book that's written about parenting that helps you with this, I don't think. You just go through it. And like I said, it's always different when it's you Versus, you know, for me, it's like if, if someone's wrong with me, I'm like, throw science at me as much as you can. I'll test out whatever you want. But when it's when it's somebody else that you that you love and know, and, and like you like you said, uh, you know her her demeanor, and when that changes because of it, it's it's got to be so uh, so goddamn difficult. That uh, where do you start? You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that that is the the hardest part. I I just think. You know, we have this platform, like we, we've like worked really hard and we like doing things for other people. And I would yeah. love to see if, if we can fix this, like we can fix other things. And, and I want to see this stuff become more accessible to people. And that research makes it more accessible to people because the research is what costs the most money. I mean, yeah, it, developing these drugs is where, where the costs are. So if we can develop these drugs, we can make it accessible to folks and affordable to other people so like I, I would said, rather use my space to do that than anything yeah. else uh again francis changed my life you go to portugaldemand.com you'll see it right in the middle of the website uh the gofundme page if you can donate anybody in the history a long history almost 20 years of your band that has ever seen you or or, or all the times you've come to milwaukee and 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 done great acoustic sets for us if anybody can just donate whatever they can to that, uh, it's it's a it's a great start, and that's where we, we want to at least get a start. The, the timing couldn't be any stranger. Uh, Chris Black changed my life. The album coming out uh, next week. Congrats on it, man! Your got ninth album, 20, 20 years <laughs> album. That's insane. Yeah, ninth album. Um, yeah, Chris Black changed my life. It's uh, it's named for our 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 hype, I guess our hype man, I would yeah. quote unquote say that, but he was really just our, our buddy. Like, I just liked being on tour with this dude. It was like Bez and Happy Mondays, you know? <laughs> like, dude is just like dancing. Like, he's he's yeah. just there to have a good time. You know, <laughs> Brian Jonestown Massacre, let me bring my buddy, he shakes a tambourine and, it, and he's fun. Like, I like yeah. being around that person, yeah. you know? Like, that's, that's what Chris was to me. And I, I know that Chris knew this stuff, but none of us really got to say this out loud while he was here. And my whole thing with Francis, Francis changed my life. Chris changed my life. You know, it's, this album is about talking about people who change your life. 
Yeah. And I mean, that's, that's a, a thing that I think would be incredible for everybody. I, I, I think it's, it, it is like this next wave of like, that's what the social media should be used for. Like talk about people who, who exactly. change your life. And it could be big, it could be small. Like you, you know, like you gave me a shirt and I needed a shirt. I'd go to a job interview and like, it, yeah. I got the job. You know, I didn't have a button up. It's it's things like that. Like it, I would love to see like that that movement happen. Just talking I, about I, people who who did yeah. something for us. I love the album. We've been playing Dummy and it's just, it, it hooks right away. But I have to ask about working with Paul Williams. Uh, the Anxiety Clarity. What a great song, but God damn, Paul Williams is a heavy hitter, man. That guy's written my childhood. I can't imagine what that was like working with him. Oh my God, I can't thank you enough for asking about Paul Williams. <laughs> Paul a Williams, dream, man. That guy's a hero. <laughs> yeah, dude, I don't throw around genius very often, and I think you would be offended if you called him a genius, but uh, he he is, everything he says is so poetic. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, he's such a beautiful human and just the way I, I've written with him for, for a long time now. I mean, yeah. five Double years we've been though. writing together and we, wow. we, we, we do a bunch of stuff and like hang and I do, he could talk to me about driving in his car down the freeway and it, <laughs> it will move you to tears. <laughs> and the, the, the way the album builds, man, like the end of the album is Paul talking to me. So like we were singing yeah. in the studio. So like we were we were actually having like a duet. Um, and I don't I don't do that with anybody outside of Paul. Paul is the only person that I have ever felt comfortable enough to go into a room with, and just sing back and forth. I mean, and and we're sitting there singing, and and he turns to me and he's singing in the in the song. He's talking about anxiety. And he turns to me and he says, you know, everybody's scared. I know I, this is the, this is a time in this world. Like it, I feel like everybody's scared, and I yeah. feel this weight, this anxiety. You know, it's like we're watching this forest fire coming over the hill, and it's it's biblical, it's cinematic. And he's just talking about the beauty of this forest fire. And if you get too caught up in that beauty of that forest fire, it's going to consume you. And he he was wow. just speaking to me, and <laughs> we got done with that, and. I mean, it's just, it's so emotional when you're in the room with him. Yeah. And, and it was like, I, you know, I know we just did a lot of really cool, like lyrics. We wrote a lot of really cool lyrics and cool <laughs> melodies and stuff, but that's the song to me. It's, it it's perfectly sums way. up the album. It's a really poetic way to end the album. And I'm sure timing wise, it's probably something that really helps you and you probably need right now. Uh, but John, man, the best of luck when I say that, honestly, uh, we are all rooting for you. I'm hoping we can uh, raise enough money to, to help Francis. And uh, thank you so much for the time, man. I look forward to seeing you again in person. And my best to your whole family, okay? Yeah, thank you, dude. Love you. Take care. All right, love you too. Take care, man. All the best.